Hey guys, welcome back to the course. Uh, in this lecture, I'm just going to talk real quickly about how do development firms get paid. So if you've never contracted out with a development firm or with a freelancer, this might be completely new to you. So there are two primary ways that a development firm and also development freelancers get paid. One is price per hour and two is price per project. Now there are other ones out there um, and a lot of times we end up working for things like day rates or hybrid rates. Those are kind of abnormal and that's not something you're normally going to run into and it's really not something that you're going to really worry about probably in your first year of running a web development business. So price per hour is exactly what you think it is. It's when you charge per hour of labor you put into the project. Another way of calling this is time and materials. So instead of, say, uh, estimating that a project is going to just take this amount of money, what you typically will end up doing is give a projection of how many hours it takes, and then you'll just work on the project and bill afterwards. Now, in a lot of cases, uh, really well-known, well-established firms, they can charge time and materials and not even give an estimation. Um, all they do is say, this is our per hour rate, and then if you engage us for this entire project, then really all they worry about is billing after the fact. So after they spent 100 hours or 50 hours, they'll send you a bill, and then they typically will use something like net 15 or net 30 to get paid. Now the other one is price per project, and basically what that means is that uh, you take a chunk of work or a task and you give an estimate for the entirety of that task. So that is regardless of whether or not that task takes you 10 hours or 100 hours or 200 hours. You're going to make an estimation at the beginning. You're going to say that price. The client's going to agree with you and then you work on it and then you get paid based off of whatever agreement you have for when you get paid. Maybe you get paid up front. Maybe you get paid at the end. Maybe it's split out over milestones. So now there are obvious uh, pros and cons for both of them. As a development firm, you're almost always going to want to work on time and materials. Um, and the reason why that is is because one of the biggest headaches of running a development firm is that your estimations are not always correct and it's almost impossible to get an estimation that's accurate every single time. Why are estimations hard to predict? Well, because a lot of times you just don't know everything that goes into a project and it's impossible without spending an enormous amount of time up front to figure out how complex each individual issue that's included in a project is. A lot of times you'll look at something and say, oh, we can do that in 10 hours. Once you actually get into it, research it, try to actually do it, you run into a bug and it ends up taking 30 hours. This happens to quite literally every developer in the world, every development firm in the world. Um, has trouble estimating up front. Under a time and material agreement, um, the communication between you and the client, it's so much easier. All you have to say is this has how long it took me, and that's really it, because you've agreed to just pay for your time. And ultimately, that's what every single freelancer or development firm wants. They want to be paid for their time. So obviously, the cons of setting up a time and materials uh, way of getting paid are that it's harder to be competitive with time and materials. You can't really bid against other people. You almost always have a per hour rate um, and it's hard to change that per hour rate and then have them uh, kind of believe you when you say all of a sudden this developer is only worth $30 an hour as opposed to before when you said he was worth $50 an hour.